My mother used to make all my clothes when I was young, my, my and my sister's clothes. And it's back in the 60s when there was a lot more people doing dressmaking. From a very early age, I was used to choosing fabrics, looking at patterns, and being really aware of clothes being made for me. And I wanted to do it myself, so she taught me how to use a machine and how to follow a pattern. I do remember being very jealous of a girl at school who had a hot pantsuit. And it was actually very, um, it was back in the days of Carnaby Street. See, I'm making myself sound old now. And I remember it being lime green and turquoise and sort of wild psychedelic patterns. And it was a pair of shorts, a pair of hot pants and a, and a dress over the top. And I'm pretty sure I had a go at trying to make one of those. I think I never wanted to look the same as everybody else. Putting your own stamp, putting your own mark on something and, and being an individual. And that's why I like living in London. I think that's what London has is great individuality. Sometimes you go to other countries and you come, you go to other countries in Europe where everybody looks incredibly chic, but they look the same. It wasn't until I was in my late teens that I realized there was actually a job to be had designing clothes in the theater, which is where I started. All costume designers will say that 80% of their job is, is psychology. You know, the tiny bit is the creative process. A lot of it is about dealing with people and dealing with characters and dealing with neuroses, whether you're dealing with the director and trying to understand their vision and try to you know, grasp what they're communicating to you or whether it's really getting to grips with an actor who have, have their own hang-ups. They all do. I mean, all actors, all people have insecurities. So you have to overcome that and you have to gain their trust. Then there comes a moment which is like a magical moment when suddenly it all comes together. And you can tell, you can tell when the actor realizes this is the moment I can feel the character happening. That's the most exciting part. Now, the next sense of achievement is if the film ends up being great. I like the fact that filmmaking is a collaborative effort and I'm working with other people. I'm not just on my own, as a, like a painter or even a fashion designer, really. I'm working with other people to create a world and a story and make characters believable. Um, and as long as I continue to love it, I'll continue to do it because it is, it is a great sacrifice. When you are doing a job, it completely dominates your life. Your friends and family have to be prepared to lose you for sometimes up to a year um, because it's, it's a 24-hour job practically. Your head is completely in it. You can't do anything else. So it's got to be worthwhile. It's always hard work. I mean, however much money you have is never enough or you never have enough time. There are always hurdles to overcome, but then that's part of the challenge. That's why I like it. I think if it was too easy, I wouldn't like it either. When I started in the theater particularly, there was a lot more money for experimental, avant-garde, visual theater. So people coming straight out of college were given a chance. And I think there's less of that now. And I think there's more and more art being produced that is formulaic. And so people tend to hire the people who have good track records, who they know are good. So the same people get employed over and over. So it's very difficult for young people to break in. So the advice you have to give is you have to be, you have to persevere. You have to really believe in yourself and have the courage of your own convictions. Know that what you're doing is right or like what you're doing, because you have to be able to sell that. And you have to just be prepared to work very hard for very little for a long time. There's been a lot of talk recently, obviously, and always has been, of inequality in the film industry. And in lots of fields, I can absolutely see that, but actually my field has traditionally been the domain of women and gay men on the whole. The one great thing about this job is that there's no um, age discrimination. There are costume designers of both sexes who are in their 80s and still working, which is great. And it's great because you're employed for your experience and not discriminated against for age, which you are in a lot of other fields. The shirt, actually the shirt has a story. The shirt is old Gucci from 1997, and it was a shirt I bought for Margot Robbie in The Wolf of Wall Street. And then when I was getting dressed, the last time I wore this outfit, I kind of thought there was something missing here. And I need, I know I need an orange tie. And I looked on the floor in my bedroom and there's a pair of trainers that belong to my boyfriend with orange laces, so I stole that. <laughs>